Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and this is going to be a brief little review for Sword Art Online, episode 15. Just absolutely a brilliant episode for anyone who was doubting whether the story could really effectively continue once the game was won and everyone was saved. I think this episode answers those qualms absolutely. There is much more story to tell, and it's just as fascinating as what we saw within the game Sword Art Online, as far as I'm concerned, by the end of the episode. Now, we start off with this really freaky sort of nightmare sequence that Carito is having, remembering back to inside the game, hanging out with Asuna one day on the porch of their log cabin in the woods, and all of a sudden she disappears and everything starts shattering and he wakes up in a cold sweat and it's just unnerving because we're remembering, as he is, what has preceded this, you know, the 14 episodes building up to it. And we meet his little sister, actually, which I thought was really cool. I was wondering as the opening credits started, which I have to say I loved the song for the opening credits, totally kicked ass, you know, I was wondering who this girl with this short black hair was. Was this going to be the real world persona of Asuna? Because they show her quite a bit and I didn't really know. Well, no, it's actually his sister, or at least that's what we think, and that's what he thinks at first, and we find out throughout the episode that she's actually a cousin-in-law of sorts and has a crush on him. Well, I'm not going to delve too deeply into that one because I think it's early to get into that territory, but I do find it very interesting that she was by his bedside, very much how he is now being in the real world once again, to Asuna. He found out where she was. She is one of 300 members who have yet to wake up, and the game creator, Kayaba, has been missing. I just find this so compelling watching this, and the myriad questions I once had have been replaced by all new ones. And of course, all of these questions only get that much deeper when Kirito goes and visits Asuna's hospital room, and he meets her father, who apparently is aware of his presence, having been there before. You get the sense they've met each other before. And in tow is this sort of family acquaintance of Asuna's, who right off the bat, immediately red flags went up, this guy is going to be a problem. I knew it within the first few seconds of seeing him. Little did I think we'd actually get hints of that so soon, being in the same episode. But essentially, once the father leaves, he's, you know, giving Carito the runaround, telling him, I'm going to marry Asuna. I'm going to take advantage of this situation. Who do you think's keeping her alive? I work with the company that's doing so, and all of this stuff. And it occurred to me, you know, they made a big show of the fact this guy's wearing glasses. And I think one of the things that stands out the most to me from the end of episode 14, just before Carito wakes up was Kayaba wearing glasses and I'm not saying that this character is Kayaba but it just seems funny to me how all of these different characters are commingling in this sort of short space I mean Asuna is still in this coma this this game induced coma in a way and you have this guy who's part of the company that's you know cleaned up after the mess of the original game company and all of this stuff it just seems too coincidental almost if not purposeful so you know but the big thing towards the end, other than the revelation that Carito's sister is not, in fact, his sister, but his cousin-in-law, I guess, is the email he gets from, of all people, Egil. And this contains a photo of Asuna. And I can only guess this is a brand new photo of the as-yet-coming ALO, which, you know, I've gotten hints about from people online and such. And so I'm just wondering, you know, is this where the 300 people are, and what is the purpose of it? Does that mean Kayaba is still out there? Is he still screwing around, and why? And of course, I'm sure this is meant to bait Kirito back into action, and so, you know, I mean, I am just dying to see where this goes. Every episode, they manage to really keep me on the edge of my seat, really compel me with their story, make me fall for their characters. You know, that whole scene when Kirito comes home and is crying his eyes out about the fact that this guy's trying to move in on his territory and there's nothing he can do about it. He cries to his sister slash cousin. It broke my heart. And this is how many episodes into this show we've been up and down, back and forth, and it still has the emotional impact from when I started watching it. So I'm absolutely loving it. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 15. Did you dig the new opening song? Do you love the story? Is it following the light novels very closely? Because I didn't get any sense from anyone who's hinted about it to me that Asuna would still be in a game by force. So what's going on? You know, is this true to the story or are they going off on a whole separate branch? I'd love to hear from you. And otherwise, that's going to be pretty much it for me on this one. So I'll catch you later. Peace.